So welcome everybody to our final session this week in the Braille Sense 6 um, series uh, from Sight and Sound Technology. My name is Stuart Lawler. I'm delighted to be back with you again uh, for the fourth and final session, as I say. We've looked at a lot of different things this week. We had a look at email. We had a look at uh, um, how to use Google Drive. Yesterday, we explored the Play Store. And indeed, we had our own tech problems. And today, we're having a look at a couple of uh, newish features, I suppose, um, some of which are unique to Braille Sense 6. So there's quite a bit to get through today. I, my thought is to go through each topic and stop for questions. Um, we will be joined uh, shortly uh, by Fanula Murphy from Sight and Sound Technology, who'll be helping with raised hands, etc. cetera. Um, but until then, I will look after that as well. So if you have anything you want to say, please raise your hand or put a message in the chat window and we'll get to it as soon as we can. The things we're gonna look at today are the dictionary uh, application, which now comes as part of the Braille Sense 6 free of charge. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the, um, the Bookshare uh, download um, feature on Braille Sense 6. And we're going to look at web radio. And I'll finish off by talking a little bit about language profiles. And I'll also try to allow some time at the end of the session for anybody who has general questions that we may not have covered this week. I should also say that we're very keen to get feedback on this series of training. So if you have anything you would like to say, good or bad, I hasten to add, please do send an email to myself, or if you'd rather send it to a more general email where it can all be lumped in together, you can send it to sales at sightandsound.co.uk. And if there is a need for more such sessions like this, we're very happy to run them. We appreciate this as a new product, and people are getting their hands on the product. So if you do need to, if you feel there is a need for more such sessions, please let us know, because all this feedback uh, is very important. So Fanula has just joined us from Sight and Sound Technology as well, so uh, which is great. And um, I'm going to share my screen so that people will be able to hear. And for those who can see or who may be watching, will also be able to see the audio, uh, the a screen of the Braille Sense 6. Okay, so we're now sharing our screen and just so that everyone is at the same place, we're at the word processor, file manager, we're at F. The file manager. So let's talk about the dictionary and the dictionary application in previous versions of the Braille Sense, whether it was the U2 or the Polaris, came as an extra add-on that you would pay for either at time of purchase or as a later add-on. Now in Braille Sense 6, um, the dictionary comes free. And there are a range of dictionaries to choose from, a range of languages, and uh, I'll show you how you can add those languages if you wish. By default, the Collins and Webster English dictionaries are installed, but there's also French, Italian, and Spanish. So let's go to the extras menu where the dictionary can be found. I'm at the file manager, just let's make sure. File manager, F. And I'm, and I'm gonna press the letter X to go to my extras menu. X. So we're on Excel viewer. Sets dictionary, D. And we have a little bit of breakup with the speech, but we'll uh, keep going and I'll try to talk through as much of this as we can. So I'm going to press enter on Sense Dictionary. And Webster's English Dictionary Keyword Edit Box. We're brought into um, a search box for the Webster's English Dictionary. Now, there are other dictionaries I've installed here. So if I want to look up a word and I want to get something other than Webster's, I can press space with dot four. Collins UK Dictionary Keyword Edit Box. So I can get the Collins UK Dictionary. Collins English Thesaurus Keyword or Edit Box. I can go for Collins English Thesaurus. And if I do space with dot four again, it's got to the end. So that's Collins all I have. UK Dictionary Keyword so I Edit have Box. English um, dictionaries installed here. But if I want to explore other dictionaries that are available for me to download, I can press Enter with I. Install Dictionary Dialog. 
So we have a couple of dictionaries to choose from here. We have Spanish. French 2, 3 list item. French. Italian 3, 3 list Italian. item. So I could choose any of those to have that extra functionality installed. I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to escape out of that. Collins UK dictionary keyword edit box. So I'm in the Collins UK dictionary. Now you can simply here type a keyword uh, to get um, a definition of that keyword. So let's just type, uh, I don't know, uh, weekend is the first thing I've thought of. So weekend, and I'm going to press enter on weekend. Searching weekend, week, and multi read edit box. So the first thing it says to me, it said searching, then it said weekend, and it said weekend. So it helps you uh, by highlighting or pronouncing the different syllables. Let's get a definition of the word weekend, find out what it actually is, because we're getting so near the weekend. Uh, I can press space with dots five and six to move forward through my definitions. Noun, countable. And I'll do it again. 1A weekend is Saturday and Sunday. Okay, and if I do it again. Blank. So if I, there is no more definitions in columns. If I do space with dots two and three. 1A weekend is Saturday and Sunday. So that's um, the only definition we have for weekend. Now, uh, let me go back to my search. So I'm going to press space with dots two and three. Noun, countable. And I'm going to now uh, shift and tab with space with dots one and two. Entries. Weekend one, three list item. And there are three entries because there are other words similar to weekend. For example, weekends. Weekender two, three list item. Weekender. Weekends three, three list item. And weekends. So it doesn't just search for the word you typed in. It will find other words that may be similar. And this is really useful if you have... I think we all have words, don't we, that we just get blocks, blocks about spelling. And my big one is bureaucracy or bureaucrat, anything to do with bureau, basically. I cannot spell, doesn't matter how many times I do it. And I still can't spell bureaucracy, but I really want to try today, okay? I know it starts with B-U-R-E. After that, I get really stuck. So let's try and see, can we do this? I quickest way I'm gonna do this is just to come out of the dictionary and load it again. Sense Dictionary. D. Press enter. Webster's English Dictionary keyword. And I'm edit do box. This in the Collins Dictionary because I want to make sure I get the UK spelling. Collins UK Dictionary keyword. Edit box. So I don't know exactly how to spell it, but I'm going to type B U R E, which should be enough for it to go and search, and I'll press enter. Searching. Not found. Checking the entered keyword. Bureau one seven list item. So it so when I did B U R E, it said it wasn't found. Then it said checking the entered keyword. So now it's it's realized the word B U R E is not a word, but there are it obviously knows that it is part of a bigger word. So now it says there are seven results. Let's go down with space and dot four. Bureaucracy two seven list item. There's the word I want. B U R E A U C R A C Y. There's no point in me trying to spell it loads of times because I'm never going to remember it. So let me press enter to get some definitions on bureaucracy. Searching. Bureaucracy. Who? Rayo. Cra. Sai. So Multi read edit box. Helping me to pronounce it. Uh, space with dot five and six. Noun. Countable. And again, space with dot five and six. 1A bureaucracy is an administrative system operated by a large number of officials. Okay, and I can go again. 2 bureaucracy refers to all the rules and procedures followed by government departments and similar organizations, especially when you think that these are complicated and cause long delays. Okay, so there is the, uh, uh, the definition of bureaucracy. Now, by the way, if you're reading a piece of text, if you're in the word processor or you're reading an email and you come across a word that you're not sure of, you can put your cursor on the word. So root your cursor to the word, make sure you're on the word and press um, backspace, um, enter and D to um, open the dictionary and get a, um, um, a definition for that word. So it'll search uh, the dictionary for the word on which, uh, where your cursor is placed. Let's have a look at the thesaurus then. So I'm just going to, again, come back to the main dictionary screen. Dictionary, D. 
Webster's English Dictionary Keyword, Edit Box. And this time I want to go down to my thesaurus. Collins UK Dictionary, Collins English Thesaurus Keyword, Edit Box. Um, I don't know, let's say excited. So excited, and I'm going to press enter. Searching. Excited multi-read edit box. Now, if I press space with dot five and six. Adjective. Thrilled, stirred, stimulated, enthusiastic, high, informal, moved, wild, aroused, awakened. Okay, so you get the idea. There's lots of uh, words, but I can also get. Uh, he was so excited he could hardly speak. Examples. Agitated, worried. Stressed, alarmed, nervous, disturbed, tense, flurried, synonym, worked up. Synonyms. It also said, if you remember, it said uh, uh, when I did a search, it said multi-read, um, excited multi-read. That's because there were other words there. So it probably searched for um, excitedly, for example. So it will search for the word, but it will also search for um, plurals of the word, for example, or past tenses of the word, if you want those as well. The dictionary is a great little tool, really handy. Uh, we, we certainly find that our schools really like it. Teachers and students find it very handy. And it's brilliant that they, that they have included it free in the Braille Sense 6. So we uh, might just... Sorry, Stuart, I was just going to say there's a couple of raised hands. So brilliant. Yes. before you start into anything else, I'll yeah, bring Grace lovely. in first because she's had her hand up there for yeah, a couple of minutes. Lovely. So. Hi, Grace. You go, Grace. You Welcome. can unmute yourself. Just one sec. You might just need yeah, to. Yeah, there you yeah. go, Grace. Hi, um, Stuart. It's Grace Wise. Um, yeah. Yeah, when I entered on the Sense Dictionary, it says file not found. But um, ah. it, is that because uh, I'm not online, perhaps, with the Braille Sense? No, Grace, uh, thank you for raising that question. Um, we've had a couple of these. When the units, the early units in particular, were shipped from Korea, it seems as though some, uh, some units did not have the dictionary installed. If you'd like to just drop me a quick email, um, we'll arrange a time and I'll, it's, it's literally, um, it's, a, it's something that will take two minutes to fix, but mm -hmm. we'll get it sorted for you. Okay, sure, thanks. Okay, brilliant. Great, and Jeff, I'll bring Jeff in there. Yeah. He's a question as well. Thank you. Unmuted, so yeah. Um, if you want to unmute yourself there, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. One sec. No. How about now? Yeah, yeah, we got you. Yeah. Don't know why Alte wasn't working. Um, yeah, I, mine's the same. Mine says dictionary file not found. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can't get enough of me, King, I'm afraid. <laughs> Jeff and I've had a session this morning. That's fine. I'll drop you an email afterwards, Jeff, and we'll arrange. I'm, it's a it's a quick fix. Um, if if you this... want to just give me instructions, I'm happy to follow okay. them. Okay. I'll yeah. I'll drop you an email and I'll see. Can we we might be able to do it over email. It okay. Be, uh, thanks. Just send need to send you a um, a dictionary file basically. So you okay. Can fine. It. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that was quick. Okay, brilliant. Any more raised hands, Vanilla? Not at the moment. If anyone has any okay. questions, pop them in the chat or use the raise hand function. Brilliant. Okie doke. So that's the dictionary. Um, right, let's move on to Bookshare. So Bookshare is a repository of books. I don't know, hundreds and thousands of them here in Ireland. I think we have a couple of hundred thousand. I think in the UK, you guys may have a little bit more. And in the States, they probably have more again. It's a, a membership service. So you have to have um, an account uh, on the Bookshare system and um, RNIB look after it in the UK and uh, the NCBI here in Ireland. So I guess if you're interested and you don't have access uh, to Bookshare, then contact your local um, organization to help you get set up. So the Bookshare download application allows you to browse titles and download them. That's essentially what it does. And it's really easy to use. The first time you open um, the Bookshare app, you'll be asked to log in with your username and password. And there's options here to save the login information so you don't have to log in again. So when I open mine in just a moment, it's going to log me in automatically. And after that, you'll be logged in automatically from now on. We're still in the dictionary, which I'm going to close. And dictionary. I'm D. Going to go back to my main menu. File manager. 
Now, in the current version of the Braille Sense software, um, the Bookshare uh, application is located in um, the extras menu, same as where the dictionary is, but this is being moved to a new menu called Books, and I'm running a beta version of that software, so mine is going to sound a little different to yours. In the future, when the update comes out, which is probably going to be in a couple of weeks, actually, you will have a books menu with a couple of new things. So I'll show you that now. But for purposes of today, if you want to follow along, go into the extras menu and find the Bookshare app. I'm going to scroll to books. The shortcut for books in the menu, by the way, will be the letter K. Apologies, my, polar, my Braille sense has just lost connectivity. So just give me one moment whilst I connect this back. We've had uh, funny situations with, um, with our connectivity today. Okay. Now presenter to activate. Okay, we're back online. So I'm going to go to again press manager K. F. And Daisy this player me into um, the books menu, which is Daisy Player. Document reader. K. Online Daisy. O. Bookshare download. And B. here is Bookshare download. So this will be what you will see in a couple of weeks when the update is released. So let's press enter on Bookshare download. And Bookshare is going to open. And it's login success. And it's logged me in. Books one, three list item. There are three options. There's a number of options on this screen. So we'll go through it um, piece by piece. You tab through this screen in the normal uh, way. So you would press space with dot four and five, or you'd press function key F3, whichever you prefer. The first uh, option is a list box of three items. The first one is books. If I down arrow with space and dot four, Periodicals, two, three list I item. Periodicals, and if I down again. History, three list history. item. So um, history will allow me look at my search um, history. What books did I look for in the last month? The periodicals is for magazines. And uh, to be honest, I really haven't looked at those at all. And obviously. Three books, one, three list item. The books uh, element is self-explanatory to look for books. Let's press the tab key now to see what else is in this area of the screen. Search type. So we have search type. When we're searching for um, a book, there are three options. Word one, three list item. The first item. is word. Category two, three list item. Second is item. category. Full text three, three list item. And the item. third is full text. Word is probably the one you're going to use most time. Mostly it's the author or uh, the ISBN or the title. The category, you might want to search for romance or fiction or, or I don't know, it could be a particular subject. And then full text is literally if you know a string or if there's something within the text that you're absolutely sure you know, you can really narrow down your search to full text. In most cases, as I say, we're going Category, to Category word one, three list item. If we tab again. Title, author or ISBN, edit box. So now we're in the search box. We will come back here in a moment. Login settings, enter S. Button. This is the login settings I spoke to you about a few minutes ago. So this is where you will save your, you can go in to modify, for example, if you got, if your password had changed on the Bookshare service, or you change your email or something, you needed to modify it, or you didn't want uh, the Bookshare service to log you in automatically, you could go in here and change these settings. And the next uh, option, if we tab. Options, enter all. The options button. menu. I'm just going to go in here for a moment to show you what options are available. So we will press enter. Options dialog. Download, download and unzip list item. So this option sets what's hap what happens to a book when you download it. And there are three options. Mine is set to download and unzip. Um, so when, um, when you get a book, it, it comes in a zip file. So I've asked uh, my Braille Sense to download and unzip the book, but let's see what other options there are. I'll hit the space bar. Download, unzip. Open list item. So I could download, um, unzip, and then open uh, the book. So in other words, I could start reading it straight away. I chose not to do that. And if I hit the space again. Download only list item. Download only will mean it will just, you'll just get the zip file and nothing else. I like the download and unzip. 
Download and unzip list and item. Back, and I'm going to hit the tab key. Download path, flash disk bookshare button. This is the download path. Where do I want to download um, the bookshare books to? I've left it at the default, which is flash disk bookshare, and it creates a subfolder inside um, this uh, folder uh, for, uh, for everything I download. So we're going to download um, a book in a sec, and we'll see then it will have created a folder for that book. Nice and neat, you know, um, that all of your bookshare uh, books are in the bookshare folder. Confirm button. This is the confirm oh. button on the, on the options dialog. There's nothing else in here, so I'm just going to press enter. Options saved. Options. We're back Enter at the options button. button. If I tab again. Exit. Space Z. And this is the exit button. So that's the layout of the screen uh, in the Bookshare app when you open it. Now let's tab back to the area where we're going to search for a book. Search content. Books one, one three list so items. Search for books. That's correct. Search type. Word one three list search item. Word. That's fine. Title. Author or ISBN. Edit box. Now, the other day I was somebody was talking to me about we got talking about the movie The Green Mile. Um, I've never read the book, and I, I I knew it was based on a book, but I never knew anything about the book. And I was advised the other day, you know, it's a pretty heavy movie to watch. It's probably worth saying, but if you know, uh, I was advised that maybe I should look at the book. So I haven't read the book, uh, but I want to at least see if it's available uh, on Bookshare. So I'm going to do a search for the Green Mile. So I'm just going to type this in. The Green Mile. And I'm going to press Enter. And it's searching. Still looking. Results. The Green Mile 134 list item. Wow. So there are 34 books that it's found called the Green Mile. It when, it, when you get your searches, there's a max of 50 per page, and then you can continue the to the next page. But thankfully, there are, not there are not 50 books called The Green Mile. There's one, it's landed on result one. Uh, I can browse with my arrow keys. The Green Genie Second Class 234 List Item. The Green Smoothie Bible 300 Delicious Recipe. The piece 334 list okay, item. If we want to make smoothies, you can, you can look that up. But let's go back up to the first one. I suspect that's it. The Green, the green Mile 134. Okay, so I don't want to download it until I'm sure it's the right one, okay? So let's, let's tab and see what options we have now. Download book button. Okay, we'll come back here in a minute. I don't want to download it just yet. Book detail, enter I. Button. That's the one I want. Book detail and the shortcut key is enter and I. Book detail dialog. Title, the Green Mile static box. Okay, I'm going to go down with space and dot four. Author, Stephen King static box. That looks like the one we want. We'll down again. ISBN, 9780000. Okay, and I'm going to go down again to the uh, summary info. Synopsis, Stephen King's international best-selling and highly acclaimed novel, also a hugely successful film starring Tom Hanks' The Green Mile, Those Who Walk It Do Not Return, because... Okay, that's the one I want. Now, if I tab here... Download book button. There's a helpful download book button on this screen as well, so I don't have to go back to the previous screen. So let's just press enter here and get the book. Book, and book detail, enter I button. I'm seeing a load of six dots uh, on my Braille display. And download complete book detail. Enter I. It button. said uh, download complete. Uh, unfortunately, we're getting a little bit of choppiness with the speech today uh, because of uh, some bandwidth issues, I suspect, with Wi Fi. Uh, so apologies for that. But download is complete. So now I can do space and Z because we kind of have done what we need to do in the Bookshare app. So let's do space and Z here. Or download. And let's go B. back to File Manager with F1. File Manager, F. Let's press Enter on File Manager. Flash Disk 1 to List Item. And Enter on Flash Disk. Attachments Folder 156 List Item. And go to Bookshare. Bookshare Folder 256 List Item. And Enter. Animal Farm No Edition Information Folder 13 List Item. So I downloaded a few books before. The Green Mile. No addition information folder two three list. There we go. There's the green mile. 
Daisy CSS 116 list and this item. This is a Daisy title, so I would use the Daisy reader on Braille Sense to open it. So let's just, for sake of completeness, let's just do that then. We know now we've confirmed that the book is here, that it's in the folder where we expected it to be. And by the way, you don't have to do this all the time. You would normally just go into the Daisy reader and do that. Uh, so let's close out of this. Manager. It's also yeah. worth saying, by the way, that you don't have to download Daisy. I think the reason it's giving us Daisy is because my preference on the Bookshare system is for Daisy. You can change that, not on this app, by the way, but you can log in uh, to Bookshare on a browser and you can select your download format. And I think in so much as it's possible, it will honor that. Um, but there's some, maybe sometimes that you don't get the book in the format you wanted. The Daisy player is now going to be in the books folder. It's currently in media. When you get your update, this will have moved. Uh, and I think it's a more sensible place to put it. But let's go back to books. Daisy player, D. And let's press enter on Daisy player. Daisy dialog. Animal farm, no addition information. Now, folder it one, said three open list Daisy item. dialog. Uh, it says animal farm. Because the last time I used the Daisy player, I was in the Bookshare folder, presumably reading Animal Farm. So if I down arrow once, and we have the green mile, the, it, the speech is trying to speak. Uh, I'm going to hit the space bar. And the uh, Daisy player will open it. So I'm going to say confirm and press enter. And what's happening now is I'm getting a percentage. No addition information, folder two, three, list item. And the speech is a little bit behind us, but now the Green Mile book is open on screen. Let's see, can I uh, just get, let's see if you can hear this. Statement. One of the things most immediately engaged age turners and ages. No one has a live tail without pause. Okay, so you have an idea that the uh, the book has now opened to the Daisy player and it starts reading automatically. Yeah. There's a whole range of functionality in the Daisy player to allow you navigate. And because the book is marked up appropriately, you'd be able to navigate by page or by chapter uh, to get to the point of the book that you wanted. And the Daisy player will always bring you back when you open it to the point at which you were at in the book. Uh, when you closed it last time. Okay, so that's Bookshare. Um, really great to have, again, to have that available. Manager, F. And I think people will find that very useful, especially if you subscribe to the Bookshare service, and maybe in particular if you're using this for research. There's a huge amount of stuff up there, and it's being added to all the time. So, Fanula, I just, it's probably a good place to pause in case there is any raised hands or chat comments that we want to deal with. Yeah, no, nothing there at the minute now. I think they're all gone off looking up that smoothie book. Oh, <laughs> oh. spoke too soon. Here's Jeff. Oh, uh, Jeff's going to make a smoothie for us. <laughs> you can un unmute yourself there, Jeff. Maybe you can try that book, Fanula, and come, yeah. come back to us, tell That's us what you think. Um, 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 oh, yes, the upgrades, Stuart. How will we get them? Will you tell uh, us what so, to do? Um, yeah, that's so a good question. The, the Braille Sense 6 will tell you automatically. You'll turn it on one day and it'll say an upgrade uh, is available. Uh, if it doesn't or if there's some issue, uh, give me a call. I will actually, it's a, uh, I will just show you where you can get it. Um, you can press the letter U for utilities. And when you go to utilities, there's an option at the very end called uh, Upgrade Braille Sense Firmware. And when you press enter on Upgrade, upgrade Braille Sense Firmware, yeah, you. When, when you press enter on Upgrade Braille, Upgrade Braille Sense Firmware, it will go ahead and do the upgrade, but it should tell you anyway. It should prompt you once you turn it on. Task name. Exit Daisy Player. Okay. Are you sure? Um, any more questions or raised hands? Oh, yes, there is actually yeah. Kevin. So I'll just bring Kevin on there. Hi. Hey, Kevin. Oh, oh, hi there. On the Bookshare login page, is there, you know, for Voice example, on. File um, Manager, F. Is there, any, uh, is there any way to tell you which Bookshare 
there's the thing is there's a couple of other books here, you know, one for students and so on yeah which yep. have different login is there any way of changing the login no apparently so this is really interesting question because we had this issue at the start of the testing process of the braille sense 6 it was only logging into the us or at least i thought it was only logging into the us bookshare they made a tweak on their end apparently um the bookshare system is smart enough so that you can only have one email address registered on the entire system for any of the Bookshare sites. Mm -hmm. So whether you're RNIB or uh, NCBI here in Ireland or I don't know in the US, wherever you are, it's still the same, ultimately the same platform you log into. They just filter what you see by your email address. So your Bookshare ID is sometimes but not always your email address but my understanding is you can log in with either but it will it, it will always get you to the right book share it's a good question okay thank you very much no problem okay at the minutes shirt no they're quite, okay thanks fanula <clears throat> so we're going to um quickly talk a little bit about the media player and the web radio i know there's some interest in this and then we'll have a quick look at language profiles. And I had, I'm going to pull up an email I got from, I think it's Neen, and I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. I think Neen is with us on the phone, and I'm going to make sure I answer Neen's questions as well. So that's my kind of aim for the next, uh, and we're trying to do all this by three o'clock to get everybody out of, out of here on time. Uh, sorry, language... Stuart, sorry, yeah. one second. Um, I see Kevin has his hand up, and I'm not sure if it... No. Okay. Sorry. If it's been dealt with or not, but maybe it's on the same topic. So, Kevin, you can unmute yourself there. Processor W. No, I think maybe that um, was a mistake. That was from the last one. Was yeah. It? Okay. So we're all good. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Okie doke. Uh, language profiles is something that you're going to, sorry, we're going to start with web radio, aren't we? We'll come back to language profiles then. So web radio has been added to the media player. It was, this was available uh, previously in the BrailleSense U2 uh, device and then went away on the Polaris. And it's not the only thing that's been brought back, of course, in the BrailleSense um, 6 from the U2. You also have the database manager for anyone who uses that. Uh, but the, uh, the web radio is a kind of a popular one. So let's press the letter M to go to media. And apologies, I've just lost connectivity again on my, so what I'm gonna do really quickly, because I think this may be causing an issue, I'm gonna reboot my Polaris, my Braille Sense. While we're doing that, uh, I'm just going to mention the ways you can get support after today. Uh, you're welcome to contact me directly and people have my email address from uh, the registrations. You can also get in touch um, with our tech support on 01604-798-070. And those guys, there's a whole team of them uh, in Northampton and they're very happy to assist you. So please do get in touch. And as I said at the start, maybe for anybody who hadn't come in or who was just coming into the session, we're very conscious that this is a new device and there's a lot of learning. And if people find that they would like more sessions like this or more training, uh, please let us know and we will do our absolute best to accommodate you. So if there is other things you think you would like to know, um, please let us know. So just one sec, I'm gonna just send this, set this up, take two seconds. And in the meantime, if anyone has a question, and it can be sort of general as well, if there's anything you want to ask that you didn't get to ask in the last couple of days, or if there's a burning question that you're uh, wanting to ask, then please feel free to do so. Grace has a question there, so I'm just going Grace, do you want to? Yeah, you're yeah. In. Oh, did I do it? Sorry, I don't think I pressed the right button. Well, Zoom has this. Zoom at the best of times can be a bit, uh, a bit funny. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Hi, Grace. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, I am fascinated to see Colour Reader on here. As somebody who's very fashion conscious, I'd love to know how <laughs> this works. 
God. And, and, and well, so I I have to admit not to having used it. Um, but that's only, that's only because I'm clearly not very fashion conscious. Uh, um, no, it does work. Now, I think it'll work better with an external camera. Um, uh -huh. so you can put external cameras into the Braille Sense 6. There is also a way you can... Um, you can use the camera because the camera obviously on the Braille Sense 6 is underneath uh, the device. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So um, I haven't used it. If anyone else has used it and they want to share any comments, uh, definitely please let us know. Um, and then another quick question, if you can hear me. Um, sorry, can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Uh -huh. um, is there anything with regard to like KNFB reader or scanning app? Again, uh, that's probably to do with the camera. Yeah, no, it's a good question. So obviously this is a, um, it's a, um, an Android uh, tablet. So you mm -hmm. can use uh, things like KNFB reader, uh, Prismo, I think some people have had uh, good experiences with as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of different um, ones that you can use. It's a matter of trying out, trying them out, Grace, to see which one mm -hmm. would you would 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 suit you most. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there are there are lots of those um, mm -hmm. available from the from the Play Store. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for uh, that, Grace. We have another. Another question from Jeff. Sure, do you want to go with that now? Yeah, please, Fanula. Yeah, we're having okay. a slight Just shout. a quick one. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, Stuart, I know you did hundreds of things. You, for, you forgot to tell us or remind us about double tapping <laughs> with some command. Do you want to tell us, A, what we do, and B, why we might want to? Why you might want to do it. Okay. So what you do is you press um, spacebar with um, enter to double tap and why you might want to do it some applications require a double tap i think the one that i cited yesterday is uh, apple music um when you're setting up your account you have to double tap to log in so uh yeah i have found that double tapping uh, enter and spacebar is a good one for that and it's a, a keystroke they added in because there was some challenges with that in the past uh, Okay, I'm just trying to connect my uh, my uh, display here so that people can hear the Braille Sense Six. If we can't hear, if we can't hear this, we will. Um, Amanda, I see your question about setting a bookmark. Uh, do you mean in the Daisy player or in the word processor? There is a bookmark uh, option in the Daisy player to set a bookmark in, I think it's, uh, under navigation. So if that's what you mean, it's in the Daisy player. And there is a shortcut key for it, which unfortunately I do not remember off the top of my head. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to, uh, we can't get our um, Braille sense um, connection back. So I'm going to use my mic and hold the speaker right beside it and hope that uh, hope everyone is able to hear that sort of. So let's talk a little bit then about the media player. As we said, the media player has had the added functionality of the web radio. So if you press the letter M, you can get to the media player which I'm going to do now. Okay, so I'm going to go to the media player with M. And I'm going to press enter. And the media player menu, which you would get to by pressing F2, has an additional menu item if we scroll forward with space and dot four. Here's the, here's the web radio item. So this is new on to those who were using Polaris. So if I press enter here, channel list. Dialogue enter C menu item. there are two options. There's channel list and there's 
channel search. So think of channel list as being your favorites. And obviously channel search is where you go to find channels that you want to add to your favorites. So let's press enter on channel search and see what we have. There are two search modes that you might want to use. You can search by category, and this is really used for browsing. If you're not really sure what station you want, but you know you want to listen to, I don't know, a bit of jazz, and you're kind of saying, I wonder what jazz there is around the world, you can, you can choose jazz and then select your country. The other option is more specific. Or two, two combo box. Search by word. So if you know the name of the station you want to search for, then you can go there and type the word. The database of stations is always being updated and it will update automatically when you start the media player if there is an update available. So for example, I know they, they uh, released an update recently, uh, last week or the week before. Uh, now, um, Kevin emailed me earlier today and asked a really good question, and I thought it's worth sharing it with everyone. I hope you don't mind, Kevin. And his query was that he had added some things to the media, to the, to the station list, and he wasn't really sure what he had on it, and he just wanted to return to scratch, get back to the beginning. There's a folder in your flash disk called Web Radio, and if you just delete that folder, uh, you'll get everything back to its original settings in the Web Radio. So... That's a, I find that a useful feature. So let's just do the category for a sec and just show you what's available. Now we're going to tab through this field. So here's the country that we would uh, pick. So we can scroll down here. Um, I don't know. Let's just go for Argentina. And we need to search a category, of course. So uh, we can just go for English. Now, the only reason it's listing two genres here is because there are only two genres based on what I have selected so far. So in Argentina and in the English language, there is variety and talk news. So I want to select talk news and see what the stations come up as. Hmm. Let's go for variety. So it's not listing anything in Argentina. So let's go for something a bit more. Right, let's go to the USA. And let's choose English. Okay, there's a whole load of stuff here. So let's just choose talk. And let's hit the, the let's hit the tab key. So you get the radio name and you get the um you get the radio name and you get the uh, the URL for the stream itself and a couple of other things as well. So I'm going to hit the tab key here. There you go. And tab again. And I'm going to add this channel to my favorites. I could also play the channel if I just want to you know, audition it and see if I'm going to use it or not. But let's just say we'll add it for the moment. And I'm going to come out of that. And I'm going to press enter and uh, I, sorry, enter and C. So this is enter and C gives you your channel list. It's like you're going into your favorites. I have two channels at the moment. I have RTE, which is the one of our, uh, our national stations here. And if I down arrow, oh, I have LBC as well. This is the, the UK. And this is the new one we added. Revolution Radio, and I'm going to press enter here. Okay, I'm going to stop that. You can stop it with backspace or you can pause with spacebar. So that's just a really quick look at the uh, media player. I just saw a question from Stuart 
Deadman, I have to I have to acknowledge questions from from Stuart's in particular, uh, and he's asking about um, t uh, text to speech on Android like um, a cappella. Why do they not? Uh, why can you not control punctuation? Why did not speak punctuation? And Stuart, my only experience of this is with eloquence because I use eloquence TTS. Um, I was lucky enough to get it before they pulled it from the Play Store. And with eloquence, and I think with the default Google one as well, you have to configure the TTS in the TTS settings. So in the case of eloquence, there is a little control panel you get with it, and that allows you to specify the punctuation. Uh, my understanding is there are some things that the Braille Sense uh, controls cannot do to the Android TTS in terms of permission, and that's one of them. So if your acapella has a way to go in through the acapella app and set the TTS, uh, that, that would be the only way around doing that. Um, okay, now I just wanted to address a question I got from uh, Neen, and I'm just gonna find her email. Um, and I'm just gonna also talk a little bit about language profiles in a sec as well, because they may be, they may be of use. Uh, so just queries that came from Neen, because I know she was only able to attend today's session. Um, in dictionary, how can I change the way Braille Sense 6 pronounces a word? Uh, unfortunately, you can't. It's not that type of dictionary. It's a definitions dictionary. It's not a dictionary like the one we have in JAWS where you change pronunciation of words. Uh, it's worth saying that sometimes with some TTS synthesizers on Android, for example, Eloquence, the Eloquence that I just spoke about, the little application to control it does actually have a pronunciation dictionary built in, but that's not natively available on the note taker. Um, in the app setting, setting list, there are 21 items. Where can I find the information of each item so that I know how they work? I think you're referring me to the uh, um, to uh, the app manager, which is available from the all apps section. And I know you weren't here yesterday, but we talked a little bit about that yesterday where you can view apps and you can uninstall them. It won't tell you how they work. Uh, so for example, if there's an app in there that you're not sure about, it might be a stock Google app, you may have to go and read about it online, maybe Google it to get the information. So they're not necessarily, you know, it's it's outside of the scope of the Braille Sense user guide, I suppose, to tell you about the stock Google apps. Um, so that's Neen's questions that she sent in uh, in advance of the session. Okay, language profiles really quickly, just to tell you a little bit about them, they give you the option to add um, additional languages and to switch them quickly. So if you're, if you're somebody who does work in multiple languages, if you maybe do a lot of uh, English, French, and German, and you wanna be able to switch quickly, you can set these profiles up so that they change the speech, braille, and where supported, the system language if you wish. So you could all have, for example, all your prompts switch into French. Um, you used to be able to do this on the older Polaris device and even on the Braille Sense 6 or on the Braille Sense um, U2 um, using macros, but it was a little bit slower and wasn't always reliable. And it's probably fair to say that right now the macro, uh, the, the language switching has a little bit of one or two teething problems still, but I just want to show you where they are and show you how you can set these profiles up. So we're going to go back to the settings menu. So we're going to press S for settings. And I'm going to press the letter L. Language profiles dialog. Profile. Default profile one five list item. I have a few language profiles here already. So the first thing it does is it lists the language profiles that are available. The first one is default. That will always be there. That's your main language profile. If I scroll down with space and dot four, French two five list items. We have French. Spanish three five list items. Spanish. German four five list items. German. Vocalizer for English demos five five list items. And I've created one called Vocalizer for English demos, which is what I'm using now because I don't normally use my speech on my Braille Sense 6 in this way. If I wanted any of those languages, I would press enter and my 
RailSense 6 would make the necessary switches. It takes a couple of seconds. I'm not going to do that now because I just am conscious of time, but I'm just going to show you briefly where you would go to add languages. So we'll press the tab key. Enter a There's an add button or enter A, which is your shortcut, and you can press enter here. Profile, edit box. This is option says profile edit box. This is where you give your profile a name. So you'll probably call it the name of the language that you're setting up. And then you're going to tab. Language, English, United Kingdom, 48 list items. This is where you set the system language. So Languages that are listed here will be languages supported by the Android system. And it's really important to note that not every language that has a Braille table has a supported Android system, um, Irish being one, for example. So just sometimes people just want the Braille code or the speech or both, but they don't necessarily want the system language. So you would have to determine when you're setting this up what you need. So you would set your language here if you wanted a different system language. I'll tab. This is where you set the Braille code. So you will pick the Braille code or the language that you want, which is also, these Braille codes, of course, are also found in the options dialog. I'll tab again. This is where you set your view uh, input grade. So how do you want the Braille to be viewed? Sense now we're setting the voice type. So if, is it Braille Sense Vocalizer or is it Android TTS? And if it's Android TTS and you have more than one TTS installed, obviously then you'll get a list of text-to-speech uh, offerings. Voice mail. English, Samantha, one, four, list I'm sitting on, Andro on, um, on Braille Sense Vocalizer, so that's why I'm now being shown the, vo the, um, the voices under Braille Sense Vocalizer. There's an option here for use secondary voice. If you turn this on, and I should stress, assuming the document you're reading is correctly marked up with language codes where there is switching of languages in the document, the Braille Sense 6 will attempt to switch languages automatically. So if you have a document with a lot of English and French, and the document has language codes and is marked up correctly, then those languages will switch automatically and speech and Braille should change. I can't stress enough that this depends on documents being marked up and it is rare, I will tell you, to find correctly marked up language texts. So this is the voice rate. So obviously if you're using different languages, you may choose or you may want to have different voice speeds because your understanding of one language may not be as good as your understanding of another. So you can set this here. You can set the voice pitch and you can confirm. And when you confirm those settings, it creates your new Braille Sense uh, profile and your languages then can be got to from anywhere on the Braille Sense by pressing F1 and L. You'll be brought into a language list and you can use first letter navigation um, to, uh, to, to, to browse to that language and uh, enter to start the language switch. That's a real whistle stop tour of language profiles. Now I'm conscious we're almost at three o'clock, but I am also aware that there may be some other questions or areas we haven't covered or things that people feel we should cover, um, in which case we look at doing some more of these sessions uh, in the not too distant future. So I'm happy just to take a few minutes if there is anything else, either from today or from any of the other topics we covered during the week. I also want to thank uh, Fanula and Sharon, my colleagues, for their support during the week. It's much easier to run these things with two people. So thank you very much to Fanula and Sharon for helping out. Um, so if there are any other questions, please use the space. Nobody there at the moment, Stuart, but I know I saw a hand raised and it went back down again. Maybe got sick of waiting for me. So if you want to go again, please do. Um, when will the sessions be available? Yeah, that's, sessions That's my will job. Be. <laughs> well, in fairness, I had, yeah, I didn't send them to Fanula yet. So we were waiting till we had them all done. And I think they're going to go on YouTube in the next day or so, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you will see the sessions on YouTube and I'll also get them. I'll put them on the Sight and Sound podcast. We'll send 
you'll anyone who's registered for this session or for any of the sessions this week, you'll get an email um, to let you know um, when those sessions are available. Okay, so thank you, everybody. Thanks so much for your for coming along this week. I know a lot of people attended all four sessions, which is really nice. Uh, I hope you've all. It's been very nice to kind of get to know people and hear what people are doing with their Braille Sense Sixes. I hope crucially, people feel a little bit more confident, and I hope that you feel you've learned something in the four days. Um, I've been. I've enjoyed being with you all. Thanks, uh, Amanda, for your message and chat. I've enjoyed being being with you all, and it's been great to chat. Um, I think Grace's hand is. Grace, did you want to ask a question? Um, oh yeah, sorry, one well, second. I'm sorry, Vanilla. I think I see Grace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, could I Grace, just please. ask? Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm probably a much more of a beginner than uh, a lot of other folks here. But don't um, believe it. <laughs> um, I've been trying to. Uh, I've forgotten how to turn the Wi-Fi on and off. Uh, I know there's a cord with spacebar something, and I'm trying to trying to remind myself throughout the session. And it's, it's, not the, it, it's the backspace key, Grace, yeah, with yeah. dots uh, one four five six th. Yeah, yeah. yeah backspace th. Oh, it's like the TH. and Stuart. While you're about it, we might as well have backspace and BLE for Bluetooth. Backspace and BLE, yeah. Backspace with dots three, four, five, six. Uh, turn Bluetooth working. on and off. It's, it's um, is that from anywhere you can do that? Is it? Yeah. Uh, it should do, yeah. Ah, uh, it's just uh, beeping for me. For Are you reason. holding it, Grace? What I find is rather than pressing them all together, hold in backspace first. Uh, have yeah. that held in with your uh, little finger. Yes. You have to, sometimes have, it helps to have three hands sometimes when you're doing these commands. But, yeah. What um, it is that cord? I accidentally. Uh, doing a space bar with it as well. And that's why it uh, beams at me. Yeah. But if I let go of the space bar and just do the TH, uh, this sign with a space. I mean, I don't know if other people have that problem or just me. <laughs> but No, uh, I, I, I certainly know with, you know with chord commands in general, if you press everything together, they, they tend not yeah. to work. So yeah, you do oh need to God. hold the, uh, the chord as key, I suppose we call it first and then the others alongside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you very much because I, I just Susan. thought I, I I I'd be stuck trying I, I looked in help and everything and I just couldn't find it so <laughs> that's yeah. what I've asked before you go no problem and what we might do when the new firmware is released we'll run another session uh just to go through some of the changes so if anyone wants to come to that we'll make sure an email gets out to everybody uh, near that time as well Thank you very much. I mean, from my point of view, I don't know if anybody else and, and whether this has been too uh, really cheeky, but I would probably appreciate a session on uh, on web, on uh, you know, just a, like the internet. And uh, again, it's probably a simple thing. Probably cover internet and word in in one go. That uh, would be useful if um, if that could be possible. Um, okay. Don't know so so what we might do, and that's a good, uh, what, what we might do is when we send the email out tomorrow, I might ask anyone who has any feedback at all just to send a, a reply email. And if you, Grace, mm -hmm. if you want to just mention that, mm -hmm. um, sure. it will help us to, yeah. Lovely, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, take care and uh, we'll talk to everybody soon.